It's Honeypod Live with your host, Hot Tub Johnny. You are tuning into the finest music curation available on the internet today. Tonight's special guest is Jessica Gramugula. Oh, we are back indeed. Yeah, we are. There you go, little uh, brand new uh, Heim, Summer Girl, yeah, after it was, the Britney it was, Howard track. Nice. That's groovy. Summertime loving, you know. And here we are with Jessica Gramuglia. Everyone make a little noise. Yeah. 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 Our, yeah. our super right. uh, guest for this evening, you know. Uh, Jessica, I'm welcome. Super guest? Yes, of course. Yes. Well, I mean, Special. I love Superman, so that makes me so happy. There you ah, go. see, are you uh, everybody? Jerry Seinfeld. And Seinfeld is that another superhero for you? No, no, he loves Superman. Oh, like Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, I got yes, it. Yes, I gotta, am gotta. a New Yorker, and I love uh, Superman. So, sure. All right, that makes oh, sense. You. That makes sense. You know. Well, welcome, Jessica, yeah. to uh, to thank our party. You. You know, uh, we're thrilled to sort of uh, have this moment to get to know each other, right? Yeah. Yes. That uh, sounds pretty tender, you know. It sounds sweet, but I feel like it's not going to be sweet. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So, uh, it's you not are, a medieval you, you torture are device. <laughs> <laughs> Honey pot. No one's getting we'll hurt in the taping out. of this. Nobody's going to drown. Yes. Uh, so you are right now based in Los Angeles, but come from New York originally, right? Yes, I do. East Coast? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Whereabouts? New York City? I'm, no, I'm from Westchester, Mount Kisco. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. That, that's where Disneyland guy, right? Isn't that where he's from? I have no idea. Is or, that? Right. I know Mariah Carey lived in Westchester, and now my family's up in Poughkeepsie near Vassar. Yeah. Uh, well, we have uh, Franklin Roosevelt's house up there. Okay. Wow. Fun fact. That's impressive. The Morse Code house, mm-hmm. the, you know, the boop, 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 that's yeah. up there. Yeah. People mm-hmm. are like, what's Poughkeepsie? <laughs> Poughkeepsie has a huge concert venue. It has the Chance Theater that I interned at. Oh, no, no, you used to have the stadium. There's a stadium? There used to be, like, a big concert venue for, like, when I was young. Oh, there's no stadium. It's just like um, a small, like Troubadour size. No, oh, I The Chance right. Theater. Okay. There used to be a big one. Yeah. I feel a little gypped, but okay. <laughs> that's what the city was for. Hey, uh, that's a good size. Like the mid size. That's a good size like, little no club, you, you know? It's a good view. Everything sounds great, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get to meet all your bands afterwards. I met so many of my favorite bands growing up. Nice. Have permanent ringing in my ears because of it. You were, you were there. Second. You were there every night. So this oh, is yeah. before college. This before is before college. This is high school or high school. Uh, yeah, I, even especially when I went to school in Boston. So there were always whoever went to school at Berkeley. I was right down the street. There we go. There we I go. went to Northeastern, but a lot of Berkeley friends. My friend from Northeastern is over there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I love live music. I'm all about it. That's how nice. like I connect. Like I want to hear your story. I want to feel. Your vibes. I want you to make me cry, or I want you to make me dance, or I want you to make me rage. Yeah, of course. I broke my Move. tailbone at a show, getting in the pit. Yeah. Some guy just chucked me at a punk show. He chucked what, me what to the ground. What show? What band? Do you remember? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it was at the Chance. Yeah. In there you go. Mosh pit. Get on you the know, crowd. It's, it's and happening. Dropped. You no, know. he just pretty much grabbed my body and chucked me to and the ground. Threw, yeah. He was like triple That's like <laughs> anti-punk <laughs> rules. Yeah, the, the concert stopped. They stopped the crowd mm. and we're like, hey, you, get out of here. You're not welcome over here. Uh, yeah, he doesn't yeah. know that. Don't, throw, don't no. throw the girls around. Don't chuck, I'm just <laughs> to chuck anybody. Me alone. I didn't ask for this. I understand. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense. But you had a great mosh pit moment and story from it, you know. So you many. Know. So uh, you got. An internship at the club? Was it, uh, how yeah. did that, you know, you were like, hey, let me come in during the day. And what were so you, you doing? So you threatened to sue <laughs> them? How do you, how do you, you, you a job? Now. Well, you had leverage. You had a broken tailbone. True. <laughs> I mean, that happened during college. So my college was a five-year school. Yeah. And every other semester, you work full-time in the field. So I did live music. Record labels, management companies. Yeah. Um, you've done a, a lot of different, you know, ele- My, areas. So, like, you, wavy curve hit. until I was like, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I actually always knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know it was a job. So, it was me yeah. trying to figure out what I needed to do to do what I want to do. And then I realized, oh, it's called music supervision. Sure, sure. Were you straight up a music or film lover? Or is it a, you know, movies really well, it, speak to you when you were I young? I mean, it's a touchy subject nowadays, but it all falls back to Michael Jackson. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely love Michael Jackson. Sure, sure. He influenced thriller? my entire career. Was it the thriller it moment? It wasn't thriller, no. It was, so my favorite Michael Jackson film that he did was called Ghost. Mm-hmm. Not as well known, mm-hmm. but he has like a haunted house and he does all these fun tricks and the, the people of the town come in and go, stop like 
scaring our kids. And then he's like, I'm going to scare you. And then they all have a great time. And then uh, they welcome him into the city. All right. All right. And there's lots of dancing on the ceiling. Yeah. You know? Ghosts dancing. Ghosts? Yeah. That sounds so, pretty so fun. Was it like an hour long? <laughs> it's like an hour long. I He actually, I got to see it live in L.A. It was probably one of the great, greatest moments of my life. Yeah. Definitely cried. Definitely tried to hide it. Wow. Uh, but... I'm very proud. I'm like that. The, the fact that I got to see my favorite Michael Jackson piece in a theater yeah. was like so rewarding. Came yeah. full circle. But for me, I did all these. I used to like dance. I was on a competitive dance team. Mm, fun. And we make these stupid videos at mm. home. And I was like, what do I have to do to do that? I'm like, I want to do what Michael does. I want to get some cool music, make a cool video, and make everyone laugh or cry or feel whatever I want them to feel. Yeah. And eventually, we were, we, I say we because I have a twin, and so a lot of my life has a, a partner to it. Yeah. So we were assigned in high school this uh, media class, take our camera and go out and film an interview with a football player or a teacher and just do an interview like you're on a news forecast yeah, yeah i'm like we're like oh that's cute and then we go we use like rock band or something and we make an entirely new song make a music video deliver it <laughs> and he just goes you know this is not at all what i asked you to do but yeah. you get an a because you went above and beyond and then yeah. we were like what do we have to do to do that and he goes communications or editing so i actually started off as a music editor or mm. And so I was video editing, music You're editing, cutting. went into the studio, did some audio recording, yeah. got my degree in that, my two-year degree in that, associates. Then I found out that what I actually wanted to do was called music supervision. Mm -hmm. and then if there was a name for it. There was a name for yeah. it. And I was like, I can the actually get The licensing element involved in it. Yeah, you know? music business, who knew? Yeah. So I have a bachelor's of science in the actual industry, which was pretty dope. With a full Studied. resume when I graduated. Yeah, yeah, Man. that is incredible. Yeah. Good, a, a good little way to begin. Impressive. A great way to begin. <laughs> music, yeah. music editing is the, like, not dirty secret, but it's really the way into supervision. And yeah. The, it always the has the been. Yeah. It's always been. I love most music of the editor. Most of the big ones have been editors at one time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you were eventually uh, asked to come out to Los Angeles then? I was not. No? My you just moved? Yeah. So I've were you always told not to come out? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. L.A. was like, whoa, you're a lot. This is too much. <laughs> But, no, I wanted to move to California my entire life. I've always been an ocean girl. Sure. I'm a surfer. I learned how to surf in Long Island and New Jersey. Jones Beach. Jones Beach. <laughs> nice. But, but, yeah, so I was like, I'm going to do it. And so after college, I worked in the city, New York City, for a mm -hmm. little bit. And I took my one-week vacation because I had one week a year off. That's all you got when you're first starting yeah, off in the it. industry. Yeah. And I was like, well, if I want to do this right, I got to go to L.A. So I took my first trip, first time here. I went back to New York, put my two weeks in, moved in with my parents. Wow. I had five or six side jobs. Mm. I just worked as much as I could to save Same. up as much money. And yeah. then I bought a one-way ticket. I was talking to, his name is Nick LaPointe at Warner Chapel. Mm -hmm. um, I call him my life guru. He's <laughs> the greatest thing that happened. So he, I emailed him, and I go, Nick, I want this job. I'm moving to L.A. whether you hire me or not. Yeah. I have a one-way ticket. I'm going to be there, and I would really like you to consider me for this role at Warner Chapel. So he goes, okay, and then we go through the whole interview process. I move here with two suitcases, stay on my friend's living room floor, wow. yeah. um, have my final in-person interview, get hired on Monday then the, over the weekend. Nice. Yeah, and the it rest began, was history. And it began. Yeah. No yeah. car. No car back no home. No car. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Flying you. out with two suitcases. It was extremely terrifying in the moment but it's do you nice want to tell like that for back. a half hour and be the musical guest <laughs> sure you got a lot of applause oh oh yeah oh yeah see you might I have mean, to take it we might be ready for a ted talk you oh know? <laughs> <laughs> hey ted i'll tell yeah. you about the music industry <laughs> why not uh so you're working at warner chapel which is awesome because incredible artists you know mm -hmm. huge back catalog all kinds of active brand new stuff yeah access to go to all the shows and yeah. you know hang and be with everyone yeah warner chapel actually got me into country music who knew oh, sure sure who knew never yeah. into it never loved it yeah. and then for i was working on chris stapleton's catalog before he was chris stapleton mm -hmm. and his biggest song was drink a beer 
that were, was cut by uh, Luke Bryan. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, this guy is making so much money off this one song called Drink a Beer. How great could that song be? It has to be awful. Yeah. And I listened to it, and I, I started crying because oh. I just related to Got it in a way I never thought story. I'd relate to a song called Drink a Beer. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this guy's got it going on. Then I went deep into Chris's catalog, got deep into Luke's catalog. My twin sister was like, you got to listen to Zach Brown Band. It's all about the the ocean. And it got the harmonies and his like mm-hmm. soulful voice. Everything you love in music. Fell in love with Zach Brown Band. Yeah. And then it just went deep. You're going back and back. Just now like I'm learning about like past country stuff yeah. like, and i'm like willie did, nelson and johnny willie, cash and all johnny, that, uh, yeah, all that you know look up poco stuff. poco <laughs> i'm not gonna remember this but i'll email you to remind p-o-c-o <laughs> poco oh that's easy to remember poco, oh, okay. all right there we go it's a high recommendation <laughs> <laughs> well that uh that that is killer you know you were working in the uh what department officially in at i was in mechanical licensing and income tracking so and you I were, also worked in that's like ten dollars a year in income these days, pretty you'd be surprised. I'm <laughs> teasing, but but yeah. So I did I did all the releases out of Nashville, pretty much, nice. and um, and then because we had all these partner videos, I got to work with Sync too, mm-hmm. um, and I was freelancing doing supervision for like indie companies, indie nice. production companies, and I was like, I really got to make this switch, but I needed it to be right. Um, and the person that I always looked up to in my career for the music, not Michael Jackson, but the just business stuff. Granted, he's a great <laughs> but um, but it was Lindsay Wolfington. One Tree oh, Hill yeah. was like the show that was like that's this is all of it coming together. Yeah, and I was like, I need to meet this woman. I need to know who she is. Um, she's just I, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. She has the same taste of music as me. Yeah, um, and so you know, being in New York, it's not going to happen because she's here. And then I moved out here, and I'm like, all right, when I need to meet this woman, what what's mm-hmm. going on? So I actually took a course at UCLA. Um, she was teaching. She, she was, was a yeah, teacher yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. I like it was. I didn't really learn that much because I had already been doing music supervision and licensing. But for me, it was great because they brought in all these speakers from, like, all yeah. the jobs that you work with as a music supervisor that most people don't realize, like yeah. a music editor and you mm-hmm. know the post team. So I, at the end of class, I was like, Lindsay. I really like what you do, and I really respect you. Would you be Would you be willing to mentor me? Mm-hmm. And she goes, "Yeah, let's just wait till the end of class so that no one thinks I'm favoring you." And I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and so and so she did because I felt very stuck. Because once you're kind of in mechanicals, it's kind of hard to switch full time into yeah. sync and then just creative, Course. creative in general. Yeah, it's and different sh- worlds. In, in yeah, t- many places. so <laughs> it was very similar job. I'm doing the same kind of license. I just had a set rate. Everything else was the same. Yeah. So. She would meet with me. We'd have lunch or coffee and dinner and just give me advice and feedback. And so there was an opening at Warner Brothers Television. And Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I remember you said you worked there or you consulted or temp there and you've Mm -hmm. done a bunch of CW shows. Do you know anything about this department? I actually haven't met anyone yet Mm -hmm. um, who works there. I don't really know much. And instead of, like, giving me the rundown, she actually submitted my resume and they hired me. Yeah. And I, I and from that point on, it just kind of led me into the supervision world, and I will forever be grateful to yeah. Lindsay. She's an amazing, nice, amazing nice. person. Um, Shout out to Lindsay. Like, Lindsay, yeah. I yeah. love you. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, she's so great. If you get to work with you, and I got to work with her on the studio network side, which was even mm-hmm. better seeing her in action. Yeah. And she's just wonderful. Yeah, she's nice, really one nice. of the gems. Yeah. That's a nice transition because all of a sudden you are in the creative uh, supervision world, and mm-hmm. you know. Working with composers, I'm sure, for I the do. first time of yeah. like, all right, there's a whole other sort yeah. of side of this now. Yeah. I mean, it's it was really cool to be on the studio and network side because you touch everything mm-hmm. more so than you do as just a supervisor if you're working freelance. Yeah. Um, and you touch all this stuff that you don't even know. Like, you work with marketing, um, finance, l- legal, and... Um, when I was at the network side, it was even more close mm-hmm. because we work with marketing and PR and oh events yeah. and, you know, do all these uh, short form with all the actors and all the shows is very involved. Yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You get so into it. Yeah. It was, it was great. When did Awkwardly Naked <laughs> sort of come into play? So Awkwardly Naked, I technically started in high school. All right. Um, I came up with that name in high school. Yeah. And it was, for me, I saw, I love when it, you talk about music that feeds the soul. It's acoustic music. I love real strings, real instruments, 
harmonies and I like a story. I want to feel something when I listen to your songs. Mm -hmm. And I w it, it was just becoming more and more of into the electronic age. And I felt like you couldn't feel the songs anymore. And I yeah. wanted to figure, I didn't know what the company was going to be yet. Mm -hmm. I wanted to create a space for real musicians making real art that, you know, it, when you strip it down, it's still music. It's not like a, sure. you know, So computer. was this conceptualized as a music blog? No. You know? So it was initially what the goal was. I wanted to, you like, assuming I become successful in the industry, I would make, um, like, my own kind of live music where I would take these bigger bands that you never mm -hmm. really got an opportunity to see in a stripped down situation and strip them down and maybe have them talk about uh, their music. Yeah. yeah. All and, right. you know, maybe it'll be a little bit awkward, especially for bands that don't normally do intimate, intimate yeah. performances, um, and then make them be unplugged and have it be this nice emotional sure, sure. connection with the audience and nice. fans. Nice. So that's where Awkward and Naked came from. And now it's just, now it's just become more of an idealism where I just want to work with good people making the world a better place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Awkwardly Naked. And so now it's my freelance work. All my freelance work has been through Awkwardly so Naked. So that's kind of the moniker of the, your yeah. company and your brand, yeah. you know? Yeah, just be a good person. You've been outwardly naked. I've been outwardly naked. <laughs> you know, if you, you're you listening you can't see this. That's what know. we do. That's what we do at the oh, hot tub, though. Oh, they yeah, can there's see There's cameras. It's on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Twitch. Our nudity, hey, Twitch. Our nudity is out there for everyone to, 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 to gaze on. Yeah. Um, when did uh, Condé Nash, Nast come into play? Condé Nast came into play almost a year ago. Yep. So somebody that I worked with through Warner Chapel in mm -hmm. New York um, reached out to me and said, Hey, Jess, are you still freelancing? And I was like, yeah, why? What's up? And they said, we're um, looking to hire some kind of freelance to help us on the music front. We've never had a music department before, sure, yeah. and I just loved working with you, and I was, I was hoping you would say you're still freelance. Can I set up a meeting? I was like, sure. So I had a, a quick call with my now boss, mm -hmm. and he was asking me all these questions. You know, He's like, we just need a few hours a week helping clean up licenses and stuff. It'll just be like legal. I'm like, okay, great. I love, I love the paperwork. I'm a nerd for the agreement. Yeah, exactly. And Star CC and me. I'm yeah, in. <laughs> yeah. And so the thing that tipped him over the edge was uh, he said, what happens if a song doesn't clear? What would you do? Yep. And I was like, well, I would just give a bin of alternative pre-cleared options that are cleared specifically for what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So you can just pick whatever and cut it in. Yep. And he goes, no one said that to me before. <laughs> and I was like, then you've never talked to a real music supervisor because yeah. they're mostly creative like that. And yeah. he was just like, Psh, and then sent me my paperwork the next day for yeah. a freelance. And then once I left my last job that I was trying to leave for a while, it was just time to go. Um, he was like, all right, we're flying you to New York. We're unrolling you to the company. And then all of a sudden, 20 plus brands knew who I was. And I was like, all right. <sighs> And then they brought me on full time, and I created their first music department. And these there are big go. brands. This is Vogue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's cool. Look at that. Some love. In the audience. Right. Great nice. Nice. My nice. producers are over there. Perfect. Hello, Conde. <laughs> but these, you know, Conde Nast uh, represents uh, Vogue and Vanity Fair and GQ and Wired, a lot of huge, huge uh, brands of publications. And, yes. You know. Yeah, uh, we get a little taste of everything every they day. They used to kill a lot of trees. <laughs> he killed a lot of trees. Uh, oh well. I don't work with killing trees. I work with just digital video. So, you know, we try not to use paper as often as we can. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah. I think everyone does. Every yeah, we try. I try to save the planet. <laughs> Be sustainable. That's important. Exactly. It's very important. Let's talk about your set tonight. Oh, you know, yeah. How you, uh, how you is this a tree killer? The show, you know? Is it? Oh, I hope not. We did. Look, we, we printed out your you set. But, we, but we recycled the pages, so. <laughs> we, okay, so, yeah, we try to, you know, okay. light I footprint. It. I we only it. kill half the amount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, we're going into the first one? Well, you know. You, uh, I don't know. You put what this together Talk based about it esoterically. Uh, <laughs> you know, what's it, what's it supposed to say? Because so, you changed it up. You, you changed, changed it up. It. Oh, you called yeah, me yeah, out. Well, they called me done. out, guys. They called me out. 8 a.m. this morning, I got an email. Can I change my set list? Yeah. Yes. And Jabronis, of course you can. Jabronis. And of course you can. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, at first, I made a list of stuff that I just like for me. And I was like, you know, this doesn't really show who I am. It's just like what I like to listen to in my downtime. Yeah. And then the more I listened through it, I was like, this is kind of a little too mellow and doesn't really give you a taste of what Jess is like. Mm -hmm. So, Jess is a little in your face. Jess is like a little fun. Yeah. A little nerdy. 
She likes to dance. Yeah. She likes a little like soul. So I was like, let's mix it up. So this that's, is our list. So that's what we do. I wanted to start with something that I grew up listening to. Uh-huh. Uh, I went deep in the cuts for this. Because I was just like, if you want a good introduction to yeah. Jess, yeah. this song is going to do the trick. How deep is this? Were this they called the this name or were they called the other name when this came out? They were called this name. Okay. No, I don't think that. Well, the one on the one on, the one on Spotify where they were called the first name, Yeah. it doesn't exist on Spotify. We can say the name. Oh, it doesn't? They don't have the Blink album? No. Oh, all right. I don't think so. I didn't see it. I had it. You have it? I had I, it. I, I had it. I think it was on cassette tape. It was tape. worth money. So Children, I don't that have was it. like an old school three versions of a. Had a cat on the cover. Oh, gee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had cat. Before okay. Blink 182, they were Blink. Wait, is this the cat album? I don't know. There's a cat on the cover. Yeah. This might on be the, the cat single. album, Chester. Yeah, there's a cat in the album. We're looking, okay, at, we're looking think... at it. There's oh, you're looking cat. at it? There's a cat. Okay, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah, maybe but it, it was called Blink. It was called Blink, and they updated it because yeah. it's all on the Blink same page. Blink 182. Mm. So this is one of my favorite songs by Blink 182, and it might offend some of you, or it'll make you laugh, and I hope it makes you laugh because it, it puts a little joy in my soul. All so right, all right. here you go. Well, Dick and fart jokes right. in song. Dick and fart jokes thing. is all I love. It. In song. <laughs> in song. All right. In song. Jessica Gramuglia's yeah. uh, curated listening Woo! session. Yeah. Here we Give go. it up, everybody. Honey Pie Live. Shit, I would. I hope. Well, because uh, oh, we're wow. dancing so hard, what, we what? forgot to come back. We danced so hard. John oh, my God. He danced hard. I had my yeah, mind we did. set on you it. You were in it. We had some moments. There were some moments. You Man. Know. Some moments. It was all moments. A lot of moments. He's got moves. <laughs> hey. I got come moves. on, everyone. Before we even begin, give it up for Jessica. What a fantastic yeah. set. Yeah. What a great early, yeah. early show awesome. party right there. <laughs> awesome set. Awesome set. Yes, yes. Feel good. All right, take us back. Take what us happened? back right. to what, uh, what just happened. What just, because, uh, what just happened? happened? I had to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> what what? just happened? We overwhelmed Blink. Jeff. We, he's a little overwhelmed. No, yeah, it's Here, all right. He's up. Spiky. He's up. That was the music got me up. Yeah. See? You liked it? I think that's a good set. It's a good, great set. Yeah. Blink 182 and Rancid. I feel oh, like yeah. I know you like better. That, you yeah. know, that, uh, that, I know you uh, so much better now. Yeah, good. I mean, you guys start off strong. So... I grew up as a kid. Most little girls were talking about putting on tutus and makeup and stuff. Uh, I was drawing dictations on everything. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what that okay. is? A dictation? Is it a dick? Annotation. <laughs> really? A dick yeah. annotation. I've never seen this. Yeah. You've never seen, have you ever watched Summer Heights High? No, I no. see, we're generational and skipped. Well, there's a lot of generations here. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. So Drunk history. I know Summer Highland Falls, <laughs> no. but that's a composition. No. So, yeah. So, we always loved fart jokes, and yeah. so naturally, Blink-182 was one of my all-time favorite bands. Like, they were number two under Michael Jackson growing up. Yeah. So, I was like, we got to start with Take off your pants point. and jacket. Greatest album, the Mark, Tom, and Travis show. <laughs> All right. Not on Spotify, All right. so I okay. couldn't okay. give you a family reunion. But yeah. Yeah. So, we started off with that. Yeah. And then, you know, going into going out to all the punk shows and stuff. Are little, you into little... space aliens, too? No. You're not hardcore into them? No. Then. Okay. No, I'm not. Okay. But yeah, so I was like, <laughs> but put some rancid in Come there, on, going you know. deep in the cut. Yeah. That one's not, well, I guess maybe. Ode, ode to the Clash. You know, as soon yeah. as this, the first time I heard Rancid, I was like, oh my God, great. Someone's doing the Clash. I love this. Right. You know? I was like, I don't know what's going on, but I know I like it. Yes. I think I heard it at an 80s night when I was younger. There you go. I don't that's know. 90s. I did I see the. I did 90s? see. Is it nineties? I think it's a nineties. I did see so. the ultimate culmination of all that come together around circle real fast. I saw transplants do White Riot live. Uh, <laughs> so that's like all of it together. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, that's what makes them great. Yeah. Uh, and then number one, the man. The man, the myth, the legend, the there ultimate performer, the king of pop, Michael Jackson. There he yeah. is. There I it mean, is. that's my favorite Michael Had Jackson have song. It. Rock With You is a classic. It, it is. I love that song. The first album I ever bought was a cassette tape of Dangerous. Wow. And then I bought the CD when CDs were a thing uh-huh. of Dangerous. Repurchased it. Yeah. And then, you know, my mom had all the vinyls, so I listened to uh, Off the Wall and Vinyl growing up before I even bought my first cassette tape. Mm. And Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, now you're speaking yeah. to me. You know, choreographed, like, epic dance routines, you know? Yes. Interpretive dance to Queen. I did. I did, I did tie your mother down to mom and dad. There I'm gonna, you go. I got this moves and this thing I want to show you guys. Yeah, we were just bike riding in San Francisco and we were singing Bicycle, right? Sarah. 
Nice, uh, nice. But yeah, so got to go through the list. And then, you know, what comes next after the King of Pop, you get older and you find out the Spice Girls exist. <laughs> girl yeah. power, British girl power. accents, yeah. and those massive shoes. The yeah. first time I went to London, yeah. all we did was search for Spice Girl shoes. All yeah. I wanted was those shoes. Platforms. We didn't find Look them. At, no? We couldn't find them. My feet are too small, oh, well. apparently. Yeah. Sold out. They so sold my out. goal, okay, here, we're going to get real here. All the right. goal in life, yeah. Like, you know, music industry was like a realistic life goal, yeah. dream job. But like the ultimate dream job was to be in the next Spice Girls. What? Or on Saturday Night Live. Because I'm right, a New Yorker right, and who doesn't right. want to be Will yeah, Ferrell. Exactly. But, you know. Put, put, your, put, put you in Saturday, uh, SNL or put you in the Spice Girls. So or Posh, both. Can or you, if, if, since since Posh is not skin. touring right now. Could you I just take on and take wear on? Wear a little okay. Gucci dress, trip over my shoes. With I feel like heels. you're just gonna start your own casting company and then put yourself into these yeah. positions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna make I, my own I Spice I think we get, we have a a tribute, a Spice tribute project that in we can works. put together, and that pretty I'm much in. pretty close, right? Jessica. You know? Ramulia, yeah. Do you, do you have a... Which you spice go. would you be? <laughs> what spice would you be? Italian spice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Oregano spice? Oregano you gotta spice? Do, you got to pick know. one of the five. You know, uh, you can't... Uh, if we're doing a tribute basil? group... Well, she'd be... No, yeah. it's got to be, it's gotta be no, no, one no, of the girls. Uh, you know, I'll tribute. The, yeah. No, I'm talking about as a new edition. We're talking tribute. But not new edition. Tribute. tribute. of course. I'd probably be sporty spice. All right, that works. Sporty. There you go. I love baby. I always... She was always my favorite. I love scary... Yeah. Because she was always loud, and that's me. I walk into a room like, ah! I attack my friends. Okay. Ginger was my favorite. Ginger. Sporty's pretty loud. Of course. Sporty. Thank you, Alana, for oh, uh, remembering. Yeah. We go. screened the Spi Spice World film at our movie and munchies. I like think a few weeks ago. You know, Ryan this. Talby every yeah. other uh, Monday. Yeah. You know, I recently saw it on Rooftop Cinema, and I was like, this is gold. We had a blast. I mean, years later... Still just as a good of a gem. All right. This this Monday, screening in the green room, Josie and the Pussycats. No! How does that, how does that rate? You know, I haven't oh. seen it. It's yeah. one I have not seen. So you have, uh, it's Get ready for a very corny There's movie. a reason. All if right. you like corny movies. I love Spice Girls and Spice World. You're so going to love I'm, Josie I'm in, and the Pussycats. In. It's okay. so great. All yeah. right. All right. There's better storylines okay. than Josie and the Pussycats. Right. Right. Everybody's All invited. Right. All right, the next up, going into British pop, we're going to go into British pop, hip yeah. hop. Yeah. Which is the Rizzle Kicks. All right. I've been waiting for them to put out a new album. I've heard that there's nothing in the works, which kills my soul a little mm, bit. All right. But I love them. Bah, They're bah. just so much fun. They have this they really fun song. They Rizzle kicked it to the curb. They kicked it to the curb. <laughs> They rizzled I'm not, out. I'm not familiar, yeah. but I enjoyed oh. I enjoyed that uh, jumping around moment. Yeah, we all had. their music is so much fun. They have a great track called "Mama Do the Hump," yeah. and it's just so it's gold. All right. Uh, they I wish they broke America. Uh, then you got to go with the classic Brandy Carlile. Yeah, that the was new that, age. that that surprised a lot of people because it was you know it little, was an a abrupt little, switch. I a little, thought John little, picked no, it. A little more country leaning <laughs> for Brandy and yeah. a little more up dancey for Brandy. Yeah. you know so it was uh, a fun was one. Good. I love Brandy and the Twins. Yeah, I'm a twin, so anyone doing stuff as a musical twin, identical I love or you. is it uh, you know what what fraternal. kind of twin we fraternal? Don't know, it, we uh, don't know if we're identical is or black? fraternal. Is she right. black? Um, I don't have any clue. All right. Sarah, are we identical? Sarah. She doesn't know. Sarah. Close, close enough. They're are twins. Guys, are you guys identical? It doesn't matter. Why you got to label them? Why you got to label Why twins, label? you know? Why do I got to label? Can't I just be a twin? Is that <laughs> no. enough? They're the same. <laughs> at me. They're the same. That's right. right. But different. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, Brandy Carl and the twins, they do these epic three-part harmonies around one mic, unplugged, live, besides the mic. It's just like I. Every time I see them, they make me cry. They're so good. They're yep. such good musicians. There's wow. so much power to Brandy's voice. Their songwriting is great. Oh, I could. I just love them so much. Glorious. So much. It's Glorious. Like, Have you heard the, the high Dolly women? Parton, Linda Ronstadt, uh, uh, the what's her name, Emmy Lou Harris, Trio. harmonies. Right? Is yeah, it? but the, oh, before that, on Linda Ronson albums, they, My Blue Tears, is that the one? I don't know. You should I hear that. Like, listened That's to where that, this is Dolly. what this is all based on. Yeah. All, she's, like, she's like the new age classics. Yeah. That's why I like her. Yeah. Nice. I'm still learning about the classics. Okay. Uh, but let's see. What's next? We got the Avid Brothers. There you go. New album Same out. Same thing. We got some brothers writing some great stories. Sure. They are very, 
Oh, they're more of like the bluegrass, depending. I didn't give you the older stuff. Mm -hmm. But they, I have a fun story with them. One day, we decided, a group of friends, to take a Chinatown bus from New York all the way to North Carolina to see them play in their hometown wow. through New Year's. Wow, And yeah. then a massive disco ball dropped through the ceiling into the middle of the stage, left a big hole what? before the show even started, and they just kind of played around it and, like, <laughs> used it as a prop. And we were, like, scared. I was like, I came all the way here. I have slept for two hours. Yeah, yeah. The Chinatown bus was so crazy. It got pulled over because they were... Um, Transporting meth? <laughs> Not meth, but like Cuban cigars. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know? Did it come from Canada on this way? I have no idea where they came from, but it was a weird trip. I love the Avits. They I always put it. on a you good show. You made it. You saw it. You bucket listed it right there. Yeah, it's, you know, it happened. Done. So done. I love them. There you um, go. And then we got George Harrison. Yeah. Speaking I, of classic. This, this is one of my favorite songs. And so if I was making a playlist to make you think of me, whenever this song comes on, I can't stop myself. I have to dance. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I want everyone else to dance, so I'm going to play it. I think I was the only one dancing at this point. I don't care. Probably. That's Got all I Got my need. mind set on you. Yeah. I don't That's know track. what it is about it. It's very repetitive, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. Whenever it comes on, my family makes fun of me because it, <laughs> now at this point they think of me when they hear it. <laughs> And I'm, you know, you just gotta like shake a little bit, you know, yeah. like shit. In the car. I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love that sound effect. Um, and then we got Coates. Uh, he is one of my favorite Italian artists. Um, hmm. I like to because we at Connie Nest we're a very big company. We have so many different brands. Yeah. We also have all of the international versions of most of our magazines too. Yeah. Connie Nast International. And so I like to showcase international artists yeah. with my team and go, hey, here's some bands that haven't really popped in America yet that you might want to know about because yeah. I think it might be cool for this video. Um, and I just love this song. I don't know. When I first heard it, maybe like a year ago, I don't know how long ago it was, mm -hmm. I was just like, this is great. It means I'm making a mess. Yeah. Talking about making a mess of things. Appropriate. Um, you know, good for brands, you yeah, know. <laughs> I'm making a mess. Yeah. Um, but I just love it, and I like listening to different musicians from yeah. other countries, especially if it's in another language or, like, my family's native language. Um, and then Brenjoy and Landon Sears. I found this on a deep dive of Spotify, and uh -huh. I've been having it on a repeat forever. Ah. It's got a little bit of everything, and then it has those big choir vocals in yeah. it. And I'm like, yes. Was it a release radar sort of find? I genuinely don't know. I yeah. just, every once in a while, there. just go deep, and I, like, look at other artists, and then it suggests other artists. Mm, yeah. And I'm like, what is this? Yeah. And I was like, yep, yep. I'm going to listen to this until I can't anymore. All right. Uh, I can still. If we haven't gotten that far. Well, we know you can listen to the, I Got My Mind Set on You. So. For, for decades. Yeah, so, so we're good with this we're one. We're good. <laughs> and then the last one is my buddy Keelan Donovan. Uh, he, I met him through the industry, and yeah. I just love him to pieces. Um, and I figured what better song to close out the night than I Don't Want This Night to End. Yes. A big dance hit. Yes. So... That. Shout out to my buddy Keelan, who's having his first baby. Hey, Keelan. Uh, oh, Keelan. Out in Nashville in Austin. They can oh, do that boy. now with science? Yeah, with science. Keelan's having the baby. Yeah. 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 It's Keelan's actual baby. Nice. You know, like dads? I do. Arnold? I do. Oh, that. Twins, you mean? Twins. 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 With Twins Danny dads? DeVito? Yeah. Twins. Sure. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Awesome so set, that was great. Jessica. Great. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That Thank was you. fantastic. <laughs> you yeah. did it. I feel like so, I got my own hype guy back here. There he yeah. is. It's yeah. he's totally like it. back they, they there. Where were you before? They, they think DJ I'm Jesus sometimes. They'll be like, oh, it's Jesus talking, but it's just me back here. I yeah. like it. Yeah. So, Jessica, I would love to continue to talk about how awesome you are and all the things <laughs> that you, you. Yeah. We, have, we yeah. haven't got into uh, Sync This or any of that oh, sort of yeah. stuff. But we are close to uh, to uh, close so our, 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 our You have to come me. back. Our Emma <laughs> Charles moment. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. You're gonna have to yeah. come back and uh, you know do Six another set good, for we'll us. Book it you, now. you gotta aim right. for the. You gotta aim for the green fez. <laughs> <laughs> Sanaz has a fez. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sanaz, Five Timers Club. Yeah. Oh. There are a few Five Timers. So you got, you got, DJ, I you got to go. You got to aim for the bar. Yeah, you got to aim for the fez. You got to come, you got to come strong. You got to like get <laughs> up <laughs> your game, get some more project, get the big film, Fine, and come okay. back and promote. Damn. See, this, this, we're just it's setting up enough. the next time for we're you We're just giving right you goals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, teasing, we're yeah. teasing them we're right now. You, we're giving you platitudes. They're baiting me with the hat. Yeah, that's a good hat. It's working. It's a good hat. It's working. All right. 
Well, everyone, give Shrine it up one more time you, for Crazy Jessica Diamond. Gramuglia. Yeah, yeah. Jessica! Yeah. Crushing it. We, yeah. are, we are going to uh, you know, play one more song, and then uh, we're going to get Emma Charles out of the changing room and onto uh, the Hi. stage. All right. Cheer Hi. Up Club performing live tonight. Down North yeah. performing live tonight. Chris Truant, hip hop Woo! live tonight. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And we're going to continue to dance. You know, okay. so much dancing. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Hit, uh, let's do this. Hit it. Uh -huh. All right. Arm, and let's get it. Uh, let's Come on, let's live. Let's go Shit, I would. <laughs> <laughs> 